Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to use two videos to turn in the design from ZBrush Court Mini into the Rhino and specific for this type of the earring design. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this series of video, I would like to use the ZBrush Mini to creating the work and bring to the Rhino for the stone setting. So today we're gonna talk about how to use the ZBrush Cord Mini. If you're coming into the ZBrush website that you're going to see they have many different options right here and then you can use uh, click on the ZBrush Cord Mini. It's completely free. This is uh, something that the Mini can create. It's quite interesting and I think it's great for our use for the jewelry design. So once you download it then you should see a program like this. Ideally, I would like to create something like an antler and with the texture on it so I can bring to the rhino for the stone setting. But today's tutorial, I wanted to show you all these uh, function and how to use this uh, ZBrush Core Mini first. And next video, we're going to talk about this guy right here. So that's starting with something new. When you start with something new, you want to uh, click on this icon here for creating new sphere for sculpting. And then it will give you a sphere right here. There are things on the left, things on the top, and also things on the right. So let's talk about the right first. If you're coming over here, that you're going to see there's a move command. And instead of uh, like in the Rhino, we'll, we'll click on it uh, and actually move the object. Uh, this, you have to click right here, moving up and down. So as soon as you click on it, hold your mouse, you will able to move it. Same with uh, 3D scale, you can scale it big and small and the rotation. Now the rotation, you could, as soon as you click not on the object, then you were able to rotate it. It's hard to see I'm rotating it, but you're gonna see the head on this right side. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly to add on something right here. So when I rotate it, you will see the face of this guy's face is moving, showing you it's the side view, it's the top view, it's the front view, or the bottom view. Okay, so that way you can rotate it. Now, you also see whatever I draw is showing on both sides of this object. So it's more like a mirror image right here is because the on the top that we have uh, uh, activated symmetry here. Now, if you wanted to go not, um, not symmetry, you want to only draw on one side, you just need to click on this to, to deactivate it. And then so that way you will draw on one side only. Okay, also you're going to see on the left side, I have all of this tool and those are the brush for me to edit on the object. Sometimes it's much easier that if you have a tablet and you can get a, a pressure sensor tablet and uh, authentic and that way that you can press harder and press uh, not as hard to adding the, the sculpting uh, this piece right here. Um, you can also, if you're using the mouse, you constantly will need to change this. This is the draw size, right? So you can draw, make it bigger uh, draw size and you can just keep adding the clay on top of it and coming to the side, you can continue to edit on top of it. Now this uh, in the intensity uh, for the Z is the, the higher number that you get, then you get much lot more uh, pressure, even with like slightly touching it, right? So you can play with those to change your brush size, okay? And then um, you also have uh, something different, like they give you two basic form. One's a sphere, the other one, it is more like a block here, and the block already have a texture on it. So if you wanna just moving the block, something like this and the texture will follow it that's another way to do it. but we're gonna go back with the sphere right here okay so i'm going to um, quickly to talk about what happened on the left side left side is your sculpting tool a lot of time if i need to build up some clay and all i need to do is adding some extra clay on on the top of it to give a, a certain volume, I can do that. I'm going to cancel the symmetry right here. If you do have an inflate, and then you can, you know, maybe make them bigger. 
Um, if you have this, I like that this one's called snack hook and it will giving you additional piece coming out. And this is really great for like a wood branches type of a design. And something quite interesting, I'm going to have another ball here, is you have all those chisel here. And if you click on it, the chisel, it's going to give you uh, some preset model right there as a tool brush. So let's say I want to pick up this uh, spike and I just kind of coming out something like this, then you can have this spike or control Z to go back. I'm going to use a ear and I'm gonna coming over here and just draw something. And that will be the ear. Okay. Uh, the resolution will be changing later on, or we can smooth it out later on. I just want to show you what the tool is here, which you can edit up the eye, the horn, the ear, the nose, or things like that. There's a one uh, for 85 different type of a tool here. It might take a while first time to use it and you can see you have all different kind of the things that you can play with and so for example if I want to use this uh, chisel right here and I want to make my brush a little bit smaller for example something like this it's actually create quite interesting texture right there or you want to kind of dab it here 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 and then you can create this type of a texture there Okay, uh, again, you can slice it to the right or the left, and then you can have this like uh, animal horn things coming out so we can quickly to get something like this. All right, so it's quite interesting. And then um, on the bottom right here, you can choose the clay color. So you can choose this clay color or in the gold color or in, you know, different type of the uh, surface. And sometimes it's easier to see some texture right there. Okay, so those are the things that you can play with. If you feel like, oh, this is like too bumpy and I really don't like it, you can come into the polish and pretty much to kind of smooth it down, right? And if you zoom in enough, you can see that it's kind of smooth it down in this way, right? And then if you feel like, hey, I actually need to move something uh, on this clay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I can use the move tool and to continue to moving piece and I can actually moving like a, a lot more bigger or things like that. Just don't get too crazy right here that I kind of cause the problem right there. And if you don't like it, just go back. Once we create something we like and we're gonna get this into the Rhino, for example. And what you wanted to do is coming up to here, you have export for 3D print, right? Because if you save it, it's only safe for the ZBrush uh, program. It's like 3DM only can open the Rhino. So we want to uh, export for 3D print. When you export for 3D print, and I'm just, just gonna just gonna do test here, and then it will save an OBG file, and then we're gonna hit save. Okay, then that's coming into the Rhino. In the Rhino program, we're going to bring the file in by coming into the file and you have import. And when you import that, you are going to pick up that uh, file that you just save or export it. And then we're gonna click open. It will come up this dialog uh, option here. Just click okay for the default. Once it bring in, it will create its own layer and it will get something like this. Uh, notice that you have a lot of a mesh right here because we was tweaking a lot there and then it's getting a little bit loose on the bottom. Okay, if you take a look on the render view, then they will look something like this, exactly what we have from the ZBrush. Now, it is a close mesh right here. So mesh is really hard to edit. If you do want to edit, um, you, there's, there's always a way, but not an easy way. I usually don't like to edit the mesh in the in the Rhino, but if I do, you know, wanted to do it, let's say I want to chop it off on the bottom uh, or, or this size for the round things. And um, I have to turn, this into the mesh first. So we have a mesh tool. We're gonna do 
uh, turning into the polygon. And then now we have the mesh there. Now with the mesh toolbar, I'm going to uh, target there. You do have the mesh boolean tool. So you can use the boolean mesh boolean difference, this one out of this one. And so that way you will get rid of the half. Like something really simple that you can still edit your mesh here in the Rhino. But I will suggest you, you know, get rid of anything into the in the ZBrush and just bring in and not changing it. For the next video, I would like to show you the whole process uh, of adding this piece right in the middle in the ZBrush Core Mini and bring into the Rhino to adding a stone for the stone setting. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next.